David, he, Bible calls him a prophet. He is a prophet. He prophes- he, he had the most prophecies about the life and the death of Jesus. So David, who was a prophet, who was also a musician, he understood the link, the connection between prophecy and music, between prophecy and worship. He understood that those two, they go very close hand in hand. I remember early days when I was <clears throat> just learning about just learning about prophecy, just starting to get into it. It wasn't prophesying, I didn't even know how, and all of that. Um, I came to this one, one prophet, and we was just chatting, talking, and uh, was asking him. And I said, yeah, I, I used to do worship for 15 years at the church, but now I'm in a, in a different position. He's like, so so you sing, in, uh, you led worship? I was like, well, yeah, I... I play piano, I play guitar, you know, drums a little bit and uh, and a few, few few other instruments, but predominantly piano and guitar. So he's like, oh, so you're a musician? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, prophecy would be easy for you. He's like, oh, he's like, I, I, he's like, I can work with you. He's like, I, I, I can work with you. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't easy. Maybe because I'm stubborn and maybe carnal. I don't know what's wrong with me, okay? It took me a while. It took me even a while to understand. That phrase always stuck with me. And I was like, what does he mean? Why, why, why does it matter that, why, what does he mean that artistic people have much easier way of connecting with God and receiving any type of communication with God, different ways? And the, the issue is, even though I was in music, but I am super logical person, and my logic gets in the way a lot. I remember I, I, one other prophet where I was um, out of the country actually ministering, and we were in the room with, uh, uh, I, I wasn't trying to be mentored or anything, but he was a very prophetic person. Well, later on there, I found out. And he turned around and said to me something. He's like, you know what's your problem? He's like, your problem is you're too logical. Your logic gets on the way from hearing God. He just kind of dropped it and left it. I mean, we went talking about some, some other things. We left about it and all that stuff. But then that thing really stuck out to me about, uh, about the musicians, about artists. And coming back to what this prophet initially told me, he said, oh, well, if you're a worshiper, if you are a, if you're a musician, you, you'll have no problem connecting with God because music and worship and prophecy are like, uh, are, are like two legs that work one with another. I didn't understand that. He didn't expound on it. He just said, don't worry, you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it took me many, many years to figure out, but I'm figuring it out. So I'm sharing with you what I'm figuring it out, okay? Uh, David, we just read, he was a prophet. He was a very prophetic man. And he found that link between worship, music, and prophetic. And I want to tell you that there is. Let's go down in the scripture and let's, let's look at some of the examples. Let's go to Psalms 49, verse 3 to 4. It says this, My mouth will speak wisdom. And meditation in my head will, will give understanding. I will incline my ears to a proverb, and I will express my riddle, my riddle on the harp. I will draw out or loosen my speech, hard questions or dark sayings on the harp. Okay, now go to Numbers chapter, 20, uh, chapter 12, verse 8 or 9. So listen to what Moses says. God says about Moses, I speak to him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. He sees that the form of the Lord, why then were you not afraid to speak against my uh, servant Moses? 
so that the anger of the Lord was aroused against them and he departed. Psalm 49, three, he says, my mouth will speak wisdom and meditation of the heart and uh, will give understanding. I will incline my ears to a proverb and I will express a riddle on the harp and draw out or loosen speech, hard questions and dark sayings on the harp. So listen, God is saying here, I speak to prophets in dark sayings and David says on the harp, as I play, I will sing out dark saints. So what he's saying is that as I worship, as I surrender my mouth, loose, loosen my speech, as I, I give my mouth, I surrender my mouth. They, he said, as I, uh, David says, as I loosen, and on the harp I begin to, on the harp I begin to sing out dark saints, meaning prophetic mysteries, hard questions, then wisdom and understanding which is also, we, we know that in the Bible there is a spirit of wisdom and there's a, a spirit of understanding. So when we create an atmosphere of worship, we begin to invite prophetic atmosphere. We begin to invite prophetic mysteries to be revealed. Um, do you guys, some of you might know a prophet called Kim Clement. It was South African prophet. He was traveling around the world. I think he spent most of his, uh, most of his, uh, most of his time in the U.S. I believe, but I think this prophet, uh, first of all, you know he, he he has a credibility, so it's easier to talk about him. He has run a good race, and a lot of his prophecies has come to pass. But he would be a good example of this scripture, Psalm forty nine. He would lead worship. He pretty much was worshiper. I don't, well, no, he, he did preach here and there, but his services mostly consisted of worship. He himself worshiped God on piano. He played, <clears throat> and then he would prophesy to the music. Okay? And depending on the kind of type of music, he would begin to give various types of prophecies. For example, some of you know what I'm talking about. I know, I, I've seen many of his services and prophecies. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, it was before the days I was even interested in the prophecy, uh, prophecy, and as I was getting into prophecy, that's when he died. And so, but there's a lot of recordings of him, so I watched it, I've seen it. Sometimes he would wanna prophesy, for example, about a war or spiritual warfare or physical warfare or conflict that's coming up. He will instruct his musician to, bl to play a war beat <laughs> with drums or something like that. And there's gonna be this like a, almost like a war type of a, 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 a sound and music going. And you can see the atmosphere begins to fill with, uh, fill with this, this, almost like the, the sensations of war. And then he would begin to prophesy and I mean, his prophecies are still coming to pass in incredible accuracy. But then when he would want to prophesy about something else, he would change the tune and like the tune will go, will direct him the, the, the type of the music. Right now, with now we're, we're shifting more from, from just specific worship and into, 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 into even the music itself. He would direct his team, direct his musicians. He would begin to play himself a specific type of tune, specific type of chords, specific type of rhythm. And depending on the sounds, he will release the prophetic words. Those of you maybe that don't know what I'm talking about, just Google Kim Clement. Watch some of his services where he begins to prophesy and, uh, and, and lead worship uh, and uh, at the same time and he used he used the music to cultivate the prophetic word and the prophetic word was flowing and this is psalm 30 uh, psalm 49 reveals david knew the link between the worship and prophecy music and prophecy that is why at the david tabernacle david's tabernacle that will be restored in the coming days it will be a tabernacle of worship and prophecy and it will be so closely tied together